Well, it's been almost two weeks since the shootings here at Cafe Racer. There are more than 22 million acres of forested land here in Washington land that some say is becoming more and more vulnerable to wildfires. Regardless of these road closure signs, we've actually still seen cars drive through it and ignore it, and no one's gotten stuck yet at this point, but they're definitely taking chances. We're also told that McKay kidnapped an eight-year-old child from that home in Renton for a short time. That child, we're told, is okay. The ski lifts aren't moving anywhere. Things won't get hopping around here for about two more weeks when there's two feet of snow. And this lasted a good 30 to 45 minutes before police were able to get the suspect's vehicle to stop. We're here in Federal Way, and if you want to take a look, what's happening right now is detectives are waiting to process the suspect's vehicle. It's that uh, silver Ford SUV right there. This was called in as a three alarm fire. There are seven different agencies that were helping out on this. The fire is out at this point. I was able to, to hold his hand and be right there next to him. 24 years ago, Randy Haynes asked for her hand in marriage. It was on the side of I-90 on a windy September day. Shayla Haynes held her husband's hand one final time. I wish that maybe he would have said anything, something. Randy said nothing. He was in and out of consciousness, airlifted to the hospital where he would take his final breaths. He was taken away way too soon. Randy's Harley lay in a ditch, almost unrecognizable. There was no indication he was hit. The Washington State Patrol says witnesses saw a silver minivan make a sudden lane change. The van may have forced Randy, an experienced motorcyclist, off the road. Randy was thrown off his bike. This was not a rider error. Somebody did this to my husband, and we need to find out who. Shayla and Randy spent countless weekends on the open road. In fact, on any other day, she would have been on the back of that bike right by her husband's side. I don't believe that he's, he's actually gone. It's been a month, and investigators are coming up empty-handed. They are calling the incident a hit-and-run fatality until they can gather more information. There's nothing to hide from, and I would just hope that your conscience would guide you in the right direction. Here on 220th Street, traffic is moving along fine now, and the water has gone down. But earlier today, the road was closed, portions of it, and water was high. Right here in front of us, this is just a small glimpse of what this was like. This is overflow from a small creek, and we spent the day driving around, and here's a little bit more of what we saw. Waterfalls flowing onto the freeway in Everett. It's been crazy. People just really need to slow down, take their time. Made for slippery driving conditions up and down I-5. Uh, there was a big puddle, and I guess I just hydroplaned and spun out across the freeway. The heavy rain sent this already damaged house in Everett inching further down the ravine. And it just keeps sliding down into that gully and that drain that runs out through there. The water just carries the erosion out of it. Umbrellas, hard to even get a handle on. This is uh, pretty intense. I, I did not expect to see this at all. From Snohomish County to Skagit and Island counties, rain and flooding sent this herd of alpacas on Camino Island searching for higher ground. And in Mount Lake Terrace, I think that people are going to have to swim across the road instead of walk. <laughs> a swollen creek turned this road into a lake. Judging from the fire hydrant, there's probably 12 to 18 inches of standing water in the road. Emergency management officials are just trying to keep up. I think the biggest concerns that we're dealing with is the water on the roadway, either from clogged culverts or storm drains, or the fact that there's just so much water coming down, there's really no place for it to go, and it's just going to spread out. And Snohomish County emergency management officials say at this point they're just monitoring the situation. They say if it gets worse, that's when they'll up the ante and do things like sending out alerts. But again, right now, just monitoring things out here. We're live in Mount Lake Terrace. I'm Kristen Cadell, Como 4 News. Yep. You know what they say? One man's trash. A plaid blanket. Is another man's. Can we give it to one of the homeless guys I know? Treasure. It'll glitter in the grass. Sometimes it's shiny and his to keep. Well, I guess it's, yes, yeah, 31 cents. Last year it was about 15 bucks. Other times. I found a wallet over there in that area. It's something he knows he needs to give back. 
the person who will, who owned it was very surprised when I got in contact with him. And then... And these are the original 13, uh, supposedly, but they, then they throw it away. There's the things he wishes he'd never stumbled upon. And the real celebration behind it is the, uh, the sacrifices that the people made. The fireworks from the night before at Gasworks Park may have faded with the morning sun. But the trash, oh, the trash, it's scattered and piled high. Don't make a joke. This Seattle man. Everett Washington. Yes, that's his name, and yes, he's heard the jokes. And I don't have a brother named Spokane, and I don't have a sister named Aberdeen. He embarked on his scavenger hunt of sorts before daybreak. I didn't know they were such big scavengers. Just a few geese by his side. Before the other volunteers arrived, Everett was lending his time to clean up the patriotic mess. Since 2002. Uh, that's when I lost my job. Mm -hmm. He never knows what his next step will lead him to. We do believe that there are things that are already set up in our lives. We just don't know what they are. Everett Washington says he'll be back next year. Same time, same place, same spirit. <laughs> they can't help but make you proud to be an American. I love it. Mm -hmm. In Seattle, I'm Kristen Cadell, Como 4 News.